Today I am super excited to be making a homemaker's binder. It's basically an all-in-one binder with everything that you need to stay organized as a homemaker, like a meal section, a contact section, a cleaning checklist, daily goals, weekly goals, yearly goals, and whatever else you want to help you stay organized and to have everything in one place so that your house can run as smoothly as possible. I got all this stuff and we're going to make it together. So let's get started. So I got this idea from another um, homemaker's YouTube channel. I will link her down below. I had no idea homemaking binders were a thing, but girl, let me tell you, I was so excited when I found out it was. Let me explain. At the end of third grade, we had a fourth grade orientation where we like talked to our teachers and they told us what we would be learning and what we would be doing and what we needed for fourth grade. And I was so excited that I asked my mom to take me to the store like that day to get my school supplies right then and there. Third grade wasn't over yet. I was just so excited to be prepared with my purple binder, purple pencil holder, and purple backpack. At 26 years old, it seems not much has changed. Except I think that I prefer pink now. So I kind of tried to do something like this without realizing it was a thing before. This was it. It says right there, homemaking. And inside I just have like a meal plan that I wanna make this month. Some exercises for my chronic back pain. And what looks like part of an old shopping list. But today we are stepping it up with a real binder. I got a half inch because that was always the size that I preferred in high school. I feel like the one inch is just a little too big one and a half inch or two inch is definitely too big. I like the sleek little binder. Three rings, simple, straightforward. I got sheet protectors too. I think I'll probably use these for recipes. We'll see. I got two five packs of dividers. I got them because they're pretty. And then I already had this perpetual calendar, so I'm thinking I'm gonna cut it and hole punch this in so I can put people's birthdays in the binder um, so I can remember you know, when my family's birthdays are. Everything else I'm going to design on Canva. So let's get started on that. On Canva, I just ended up searching for the things that I wanted, like a meal plan, a workout chart, a contact list. For some of the pages, I just used the template that was already there, but for a lot of them, I did customize it heavily to meet the needs and also make it more beautiful. For the things that I would be printing out frequently, like a weekly meal plan, I tried to use less ink and for things that I only plan on printing out like once a year, I went ahead and used more. I'll have all these templates linked down below so that you can go ahead and customize them yourself through Canva. Hopefully it will give you guys a head start on your own homemaking binder. Then when that was done, I printed everything out and hole punched it. And then I took the perpetual calendar that I already had and cut it as evenly as I could. And then I hole punched those as well. And then we were ready to assemble. I am so excited. Excited. Look how much paper. Wow. Although I really don't recommend using dark green for your project list. It was so much ink. It like wrinkled the paper. That's okay. Live and learn. This is our beautiful homemaking binder mess. It's so beautiful. I started by taking out the dividers from the containers. They were so pretty and fun. Then I labeled each tab based on the sections I wanted and started assembling the binder backwards. The assembling process was my favorite part, even more than designing the templates on Canva and even more than going and shopping for the supplies because I really just got to see the project come together and I really was just so happy with how it turned out. When everything was put together on the inside, I started thinking about the cover. Originally, I had planned to put some pressed dried flowers in the front to make it really pretty, but I actually didn't end up liking the way that looked. So I hopped right back on Canva and quickly customized a title page. And this was the final result. This turned out so much better than I expected, honestly. It's pretty, it's simple, it's clean. I love it. Fourth grade Abby would be so happy right now. So excited and so proud. So I used 10 sections and my first divider has my daily routine. Under that, um, I have the goal to brush and floss my teeth because oftentimes I'll like get started on whatever else I want to do for the day and I'll forget <laughs> to brush and floss my teeth which is super gross <clears throat> and I won't end up doing it till like 12 o'clock so I just have it first thing on the list 
dental hygiene is really important. Then after that, I get to make our coffee in the morning. While the coffee's making, that's my time to make our bed. And then I take my coffee and have my morning devotional. That's kind of my morning routine right now. I'm always trying new things, but it's been working for me. And then for the rest of the day, I have the goal to empty the dishwasher, do one load of laundry, clean the bathroom for five minutes, tidy the house for 10 minutes, put the kitchen to bed and sweep and mop the floor. My next tab is my weekly routine. And under this, I have Mondays for baking, Tuesdays for errands, Wednesdays for cleaning, Thursdays project days. I wanna get into sewing and I don't know. <laughs> what else do I want to get into? Gardening, thrifting, crocheting. So that will be Thursdays along with any house projects that need to get done. Friday will be my declutter day and I also like to do the budget that day. Saturday is my rest day and Sunday is the Lord's day. Next I have a workout log and I kind of don't want to print this every week because it seems like a lot of ink. So I think I'm just going to put a bunch of weeks by either drawing lines or numbering it or something. Um, but this will be my workout log. Then I have a meal planning tab where I can map out a week's worth of meals. I'm so excited for this. And I also included a page under this tab um, labeled meals this month. So something that I often do is try to use up ingredients that we already have by planning meals around what we have. For example, if we've had egg noodles sitting in the cupboard for a very long time, I will plan a casserole around that. Or if we have salmon that needs to get eaten up, I will plan a meal around that. So this page is just for mapping those out, seeing what I want to make, and then, you know, crossing them off as we go. And then also I can write down meals that we've been craving, like some of our favorites are um, barbacoa or carne asada tacos. And so it's basically just a list to map out the month before I map out the week and pull ideas from as I go. Next I have my projects list. Green was a terrible idea. Don't do that. Next time I'll just buy green paper. But any projects that I want to get done, I'm just going to write down and check them off as I go. I don't know if you can see, but have tiny little check boxes. Terrible idea. Then I have my birthday tab. And again, I just use this because I already had it. Otherwise I would have designed something similar, but this is a perpetual calendar. I got it when I purchased a um, card multi-pack, like a happy birthday card multi-pack from Amazon. And it came with this little calendar. I thought it was such a good idea because I'm always forgetting birthdays and I have a lot of family members. So basically you never have to do this again. You just go to the month and you write down the people whose birthdays it is this month on the number. So this person's is on the third and this person's is on the 18th. And then every month you can just flip to that and you can just add to it as you need to. It never changes because people's birthdays are the same every year. And that way I don't forget. Then I made a contact section. When I showed this to my husband, his response was, don't you have a phone? Well, yes, yes I do. But what I mostly wanted it for were the addresses because um, I have the addresses like under text messages and whatnot, but I thought it would be nice to have important addresses all in one place where I can just pull them up as needed. That way if we're sending a card or going to someone's house, I don't have to scour my phone for it. I can just pull out the binder. Next I have a goal list. I just labeled it 2024 goal list because we're coming to a close on this year. This month is gonna be extremely busy for us. And then after that, we only have three months left in the year. And realistically, this list cannot be completed in three months. So I just figured I'll give myself time. No need to stress myself out unnecessarily. And these are goals that I would be happy to finish by the end of next year, as long as I'm actually reaching them and not just wanting to year after year after year and never getting around to them. If you'd like to know my goals, I want to become proficient in sewing, plant and grow strawberries. I really wanna get into gardening, but I feel like strawberries would be so delicious and I don't know, it would like get my feet wet and then I can go from there. Exciting. I want to learn sourdough. I'm actually gonna start learning that this month. I want to finish reading three books. I always start books and then never finish them, so. Even though it may not seem like much, I don't remember the last time I finished a book, so it's on there. I want to finish crocheting a blanket. Again, something that I've started several times and just have never finished. I want to upload consistently on my channel for one full calendar year. And then, you know, 
after that as well. But I feel like setting a measurable goal of one year will keep me accountable. I went to find high quality thrift pieces. I set a goal for five of either linen, 100% cotton, wool or leather, but they also have to be things that I love. I want to learn more about natural food and form an opinion. I want to make a harvest schedule and plan so that in 2025, once I'm all comfy with my strawberries, I can be prepared. And I want to meet with other Christian women at least once per month in order to have that fellowship and continue to grow in my walk. The next tab is a meal favorite idea tab. So I basically just put lines where we can put our um, favorite meals. So lunch and dinner are like the same thing basically. Desserts breakfast and snacks and this will just give me ideas if i'm coming up blank i can pull this out and be like oh we love enchilada suizas oh we love ground beef tacos oh ceviche sounds really good this week and then my last tab is going to be recipes that i'm planning on printing out and filling up in here and in order to keep it organized i'm going to put them in alphabetical order regardless of the category and that way i can just look up a austin breakfast tacos C, cowboy casserole. Z, Zupa Tuscana. And it's going to be wonderful. All right, well, I'm so happy that I did this. I hope that this was helpful to you guys. I feel like a real professional. Professional homemaker. The most important part of making the binder though is also making sure that you go check out my last video on cozy fall homemaking right here next. It's a great one. You won't regret it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more content around simpler living, biblical femininity, and the art of homemaking. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.